Hello YouTube, my name is Nana, welcome to my channel, and yes, I am talking about Trayvon Martin. Secondly, I'd like to address the question of what justice now? Where can we go from this case? The best part of me believes that the best possible outcome now would be somehow for George Zimmerman to recognize all his faults and recognize all his guilt and recognize how wrong he was and recognize all the racial issues inherent in his actions in the trial and then somehow, you know, take a stance against all that. Um, somehow join the movement, join, you know, anti-racist movement, uh, join social justice movements, and somehow actually, you know, fight to combat the things that drove him to these actions. Um, but I, I don't see that happening at all. I don't see him to have the conscience to do that at all. Um, I, I don't see that as a possibility. <laughs> it would be, it would be wonderful, uh, but it, I, it's not going to happen. I, I just highly doubt it. I don't think there's a possibility. One version of justice might be the idea that, you know, he lives with this racial paranoia and he essentially just becomes an agoraphobe. He refuses to leave his house and is somewhat miserable and has, he takes away his own freedom just as, a, as prison would have done. Because the idea that he's free, that he's out on the streets, that um, he has his gun back, that he uh, has all his rights back, uh, and this young boy is dead by no fault of his own, simply because of George Zimmerman's racial profiling um, due to his racial prejudice, it's sickening. It's saddening. And I, I really didn't realize t the extent to which I was affected by this case, the extent to which I was invested in this case until the verdict came out. And then I, I felt, I, I truly felt sick over the decision. Um, I felt a real sort of disgust and I felt a lot of anger towards George Zimmerman. And I mean, some of that anger is still there, but, um, it was definitely something that, you know, I and a lot of other people had to deal with because it, it does seem so atrocious and audacious that this man gets away with this crime, gets away with killing an unarmed teenage boy simply because he can say he felt afraid. He felt afraid. But a lot of us recognize that that fear wasn't reasonable. So even under stand your ground, it shouldn't stand. Because that fear was based off of racial prejudice, which is never reasonable. It's never logical. It can never be a legitimate argument. So the idea that this man is now free and out to do as he pleases is disturbing and upsetting. And it certainly speaks to changes that we must make in our society and in our system. And another element of the question, what justice now, is the conversations we now have with the black and brown youth of America. What do we tell them about the message that this trial sends? What do we tell them about where they can feel safe? Because apparently, it can't be in a supposedly safe gated community where you're just walking from the store back to your parents' house. Apparently, even then, not even an authority figure, not a policeman, but just a neighborhood watchman can come up to you and abuse you and racially profile you and then take away your life and not face any sort of punishment. George Zerman has been let go and a young black man is dead by no fault of his own, simply because George Zimmerman was racially prejudiced, simply because George Zimmerman decided to be a crazed vigilante. 
So what do we tell black and brown youth in America? Where can you be safe? What should you do? Because what was Trayvon Martin supposed to do? Apparently he wasn't supposed to wear a hoodie, according to a lot of people. So now, black and brown youth, you have to restrict your clothing, according to what will be least threatening to paranoid white people, or racist white people. Apparently you have to alter your clothing according to what won't be threatening to them. However, also don't listen to what your parents said, because I'm sure your parents, like many other parents, just as Rachel Gentel has pointed out many times, told you that if a stranger is following you or approaching you, you do not interact with them. You do not try and have a pleasant conversation with them. You do not explain yourself to them. You do not identify yourself to them. You get away from them. Or you defend yourself from them. Just like Trayvon Martin did. Just like any reasonable person would. A stranger was stalking him? What was he supposed to do? Why is it that some people expect that he was supposed to somehow identify himself, everything that he was doing, everything that was on him, show that he wasn't threatening? Why is that burden on him? Why should he have to do that? Why are we not questioning the fact that George Zimmerman assumed all these things of him and then provoked a reaction out of Trayvon Martin? So what do we tell black and brown youth in America? What do we tell them about how you can feel safe? What do we tell them about how you avoid danger? And what do we tell them about not losing faith in a system that continually refuses to acknowledge them? I honestly don't know. I think we just have to be strong. And we have to have faith regardless. And we have to keep pushing. And then we have to take this energy and this disappointment and channel it back towards change. Because becoming disillusioned, as easy as that is, as much sense as that makes, cannot be our option, unfortunately. Because sometimes we're the only ones fighting for our own change. So I think we have to understand that. An ally with others who understand these disparities and then work to change them. And I think that's the form of justice that we can see from here, if any. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this the day I upload it, then you can look forward to part three tomorrow because as you can probably tell, I have a lot to say about this issue. So I cut up the footage into somewhat manageable chunks um, and I'll be uploading over the weekend. So part three will be up tomorrow, part four will be up Saturday, and part five will be up Sunday. Yes, five parts. This whole thing was about 50 minutes um, initially. So uh, thanks for watching. If you end up making it to the end, I will see you on Sunday and you will get a big thank you. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, then hey, you can continue right now. Bye.